I'd like you to take your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, to Revelation chapter 21. We will read verses 1 through 4. We're looking at when God makes all things new. We looked at verse 1 in our previous day's devotional. So today we will look at verse 2 and possibly move onward from there. So Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. As we come into verse 2, we see that it teaches us that there will be a new new city. Not only does John see a new creation in verse 1, but he also sees a new city. He sees a place called the New Jerusalem. I believe it is a city where the redeemed of God will spend eternity. This verse gives us a little more information about that glorious place, and we'll learn more about it uh, as we come to the end of chapter 21 and into chapter 22. Notice, though, that it is a perfect city. Every man sinks. Uh, ever since man began to populate the earth, he has been in the business of building cities. You can see it all the way back. Come with me to Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 17, it says, And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch, and he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. So every city built by man, regardless of how small or how large it may be, has one thing in common. Every city is a center of sin and depravity. Of course, the larger the city, the larger the population, and the more people there are, the more sin and wickedness they devise. And as we look at Revelation chapter 21 in verse 2, we find out that God is building a holy city. Every city is a reflection of its inhabitants. We talk about a city being a place of sin, and the reason it is a place of sin is because it is filled with sinners. And this new city reflects the character of its creator. God is holy, separate from sin and sinners, and he is building a city that will be free from the taint and the presence of sin. It sounds like it's the kind of place that I would like to spend eternity, and it's the kind of place that I am going to spend eternity because I know the Lord Jesus Christ. It's also a prepared city. The Bible says that he is prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You know, when a bride prepares herself for her wedding day, the day that she will give herself unconditionally to her husband, she doesn't smear her face with grease and put on old clothes, but rather she pulls out all the stops. Her makeup, her makeup is perfect. Her hair is perfect. She is resplendent in her white wedding dress. She is the absolute image of female beauty. Well, the Lord Jesus is preparing this city for his bride. Remember what it says in John 14, verses 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Notice he isn't building a few cabins on the hills of glory. He's building and preparing a place. Uh, rather, he isn't preparing a place that is common and run of the mill. Jesus is preparing a city that is the epitome of perfection and beauty. He is preparing a place that is worthy of God. Friends, right now, you and I live in tanks of flesh. Come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And in verse 1, it says, For we know... That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. So right now we're living in very temporary tanks of flesh. But one day we will fold up these tanks and we will move into a mansion. 
Friends, that's what Jesus said in John 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. That has been the hope of the believer ever since the days of Abraham. Come with me, if you would, for a moment to Hebrews chapter 11. And in verses 9 and 10, it says, let's go back to verse 8. By faith, Abraham, Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God." That was the hope of Abraham. That was the hope of every believer since the days of Abraham. Lot moved to Sodom and Abraham continued in his tent. Abraham would not have been happy with a city here because faith has already revealed a holy heavenly city that he would occupy some wonderful day. And friends, I know just how he feels because I'm looking forward to getting to that city myself. But also we see there would be a new communion. Notice verse 3. Back in Revelation chapter 22, and in verse 3, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his God, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. This incredible verse tells us that when we arrive in heaven, our days of separation from God are over. Friends, I realize that God dwells in the tabernacles of our hearts now. The Bible tells us very clearly in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which are uh, of God, and you are not your own? I also realize that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Matthew 28, 20 says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. However, I also know that we are separated from God by our seeings and by this flesh. Ezekiel, or Exodus rather, verses 33, and chapter 33 and verse 20 rather, uh, illustrate this beautifully for us. It says there, And he said, Thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And that was because of the sin of Abraham. But friends, there is coming a day when the barriers of sin and the flesh and distance will be removed. And we will see God face to face. Job had that hope way back when he lived. In Job 19, verses 25 and 26, we find this. Job says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So even back then, Job had that wonderful hope, that wonderful assurance, and that wonderful comfort, that when life on this earth was over, that he would be in the presence of his Lord. Matthew 5 and verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This world is a place of evil. Everywhere you look, it seems like all you can see is the work of the devil. But friends, when we get to heaven, we will see, all that we'll see then is the presence of the Lord. And praise God, we will see the one who loved us enough to send his son Jesus to die for our sins on the cross. And we will see him, and friends, that will be heaven. Just seeing Jesus will be heaven. And, you know, as I stop and I think about this today, heaven is a time of personal communion. We can rejoice that we enjoy communion with our God today for those of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ is our personal Savior. But at best, that communion today is tainted because of sin, because we're all human beings. And, and I'm not excusing sin, but yet at the same time, the reality of it is even as children of God, we sin. And that fellowship with God is broken. But on the day that we stand in his presence, we will be made righteous on that day. Not only just in our position, but in our practice, we will be righteous. And that fellowship with God will never be hindered again because sin no longer has a part in our lives at that moment. And I'm looking forward, friends, to being home in heaven and being be with the sin nature behind me and understanding that sin will no longer affect my fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand, 
leads me through that promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. The next day that we're together in our devotional, we will continue to look at that communion that we will have with God and how it will be vastly different than the, from the communion that we have with him today. Have a great day.